Hello, today we're gonna to be doing a hill climb test with the Electric XP 3.0 Long Range Edition here at the South Mountain Preserve in Phoenix, Arizona. So we're gonna see how this bike does on that mountain back there. So hang tight, we're gonna jump right into it. All right, so one of the beautiful things about South Mountain is every Sunday they have something that's called Silent Sundays, where they close the road to vehicular traffic so that everybody can enjoy uh, the scenery without the noise of cars coming in and out uh, of the parking at the top of this mountain. Now, right now I am in pedal assist level three, uh, and I'm really putting in minimal effort. Uh, this bike is doing a really good job at, uh, at climbing right now. Let's take a look. We're currently a mile and a half into the ride. We've got about 51 volts in the battery, pulling 12 amps of current, and about eight minutes into the ride. Uh, so I'll keep you up to date as we go. We'll also test out some of these uh, hill stretches uh, with throttle only. All right, so I'm putting in more effort here. I'm gonna bump up to past level five on some of these steeper stretches and effort is minimal. And right now we're cruising along at about 18, 19 miles an hour. And there's some up and downhill portions here, but as we progress higher, it will be mostly uphill. All right, here's a steeper section. We are in pedal assist level five. And I'm putting in a little bit of effort here, not too much. Very comfortable. All right, this is quite the steep hill here. Pedal assist level five. Uh, and I'm definitely putting a little bit of effort in. Nothing strenuous, but I'm definitely doing some work here in pedal assist level five. All right, shifted down into fifth gear here. Just made this quite a bit easier to the point where I'm not really doing anything right now. So your gearing is absolutely important on these hills. I've mostly been riding around my neighborhood down in Gilbert. So there's not much in the way of hills there. So I stay in gear seven pretty much all the time. So now I finally get to use these gears up South Mountain. All right, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but up ahead is the top of South Mountain. Here's where we got all of our radio antennas and everything, giving us that lovely cell phone service at the top. And I'll tell you what, the views here are absolutely stunning. Now. The last time I came up here was probably when I first moved out to Arizona from Texas. And that was around 2010. So it's been a good 13 years since I've been up here. And it was beautiful when I first came, but haven't been up here since. I've been to, you know, hiking on other mountains in the area like Camelback Mountain, Piastewa Peak, uh, and a variety of others. I used to do those hikes multiple times a week, which is absolutely beautiful on a nice clear day like today. So once we get to the top, I'll adjust this camera and show you what I'm talking about. All right, we are in pedal assist level four, gear five, no problemo. Now, I don't know if you can see, but one addition I did add to this bike is the uh, side view mirror on the left-hand side, uh, which is plenty sufficient for me. And I find that that really comes uh, in handy when driving on roads and you know places where there's a lot of traffic because I like to keep my eyes on the road ahead and not continuously turning around trying to figure out whether or not there's somebody behind me or not. Uh, this particular mirror was a pretty simple install. Uh, you just pop the end cap off the handlebar, uh, pop in the mirror, use the included Allen key, and uh, tighten it down, you're good to go. 
And I'll tell you what, I love the concept of silent Sundays because between 5 a.m. and 10 a.m. every Sunday, and I think every fourth Sunday of the month, it's actually the whole day, they'll close this down. So I don't have to worry as to whether or not there's cars behind me right now, which is fantastic. All right, there's more of those saguaro cacti here. Looks like we got a little bit of a downhill portion. And we're at 22 miles an hour. And we're back to paddling. Go back into five. We'll bump it up to paddle assist level four. Now I'll tell you what, I, I ride scooters and e-bikes. And one thing that I absolutely love about e-bikes is if you want to get a little bit of a workout in, just dial in the pedal assist level, get a workout in on your way to work, on your way to running an errand, going out, enjoying a little cruise. It, it doesn't have to be electric power the whole way up. It's great to get a little workout in every now and then. And I love my scooters, but I'll tell you what, you don't get much of a workout. Aside from balancing, you're, you're really not doing much in the way of burning calories with that. So this is a great way to get a workout in. This is a steep mountain. Definitely without the uh, pedal assist here, I would absolutely be struggling. No doubt about it. I love it. Everybody's out here biking. Do the hard work, get to the top. And they scream down this mountain. Perfect place to do it. Don't have to worry about cars. And of course, I am in class two mode right now. I'm not in class three. Uh, I think 20 miles an hour is plenty sufficient for this ride. Really enjoy taking in the scenery, uh, which is a you know, big change from the busy work week, sitting in front of a computer all day. So I'm loving this. All right, I think we are getting near the top. Go back to seventh gear here. So like we've got a little downhill section. And we'll just cruise here. And what we'll do is once we get to the top, there's some lookouts there and we'll, we'll take a look at the surroundings, take in some of this beautiful scenery here. And as I mentioned in the unboxing video, this bike does have 180 millimeter discs, so we'll be testing these brakes out on the lower side of this hill. We are doing 28 miles an hour, no pedaling. This is a little downhill stretch, which is gonna end here in a moment. And we're back to pedaling again. Let's look at some of our stats here. 5.6 miles into this ride, 49.5 volts. Pulling five amps or going downhill, so. And we're about 20 minutes into this ride. All right, I think we're getting back into the uphill section of this. So I'm gonna slow down here for a moment. And we're gonna go, we're gonna go throttle only. And I'll tell you what, it is absolutely quiet out here. Wow. All right, throttle only, here we go. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 14, 15, 16, 17, 16 uphill stretch here, 14. So it's definitely got ample power, even up these steep grades. So really impressed with that. All right, there's some bikers up ahead, so let's uh, start pedaling. I gotta make it look like I'm doing some work here, all right? Dobbin, look at. 
All right, we are headed to Dobbins Lookout. I think there's a couple of lookout areas that give you kind of a different view uh, of the Phoenix metro area from above. So today we're going to take a look at both of those. All right, I'm going to get back into fifth gear. I'm doing a little too much work here. All right, pedal assist five. And if you're curious what some of the grades are, they're like anywhere from three and a half to almost seven percent. So that hopefully gives you an idea of what we're, we're, we're covering here on this climb. And this is the parking area that would normally be full on a Saturday, but it's completely empty because today is Silent Sunday. All right, this is the top of South Mountain. And that is the entire Phoenix metropolitan area out there. Directly ahead is downtown Phoenix. We've got Sky Harbor International Airport out there. Tempe and a whole lot more behind that ridge. All right, we are gonna head out uh, to one of the other lookouts now. That was Dobbins Lookout, and I believe there's one more here that we're gonna go take a look at. And here's those brakes. We are testing out the brakes. There's a little downhill section here. You know, they're not the quietest brakes, but I'll tell you what, they're a heck of a lot quieter now that they've been broken in compared to what they were before. Got to keep an eye out for our turnoff. It's the next little scenic area here. Look out. Here it is. Now bump into pedal assist five. It's going to be up and down here until we get to the next section. Little uphill stretch here. You know, this is, uh, I think, a really good test for this bike's hill climbing ability. Because I think for the most part, for, for the majority of people, this is going to be way more hill climbing than you'd see on a day-to-day on a -day basis. And so here you've got a variety of inclines, uh, varying grades. And uh, so far, I'll tell you what, this, this bike is super comfortable. Uh, I'm able to go up uh, these steep inclines in gear five, pedal assist, level five. Um, and you know, if you want to get a little workout in, absolutely uh, reduce the pedal assist level on the bike. Here we go. I'll go to pedal assist level two as we go up this little stretch here. And yeah, I'm definitely putting in some work on pedal assist too. I can feel the motor uh, assisting somewhat, but uh, it's, it's mostly me. Pedal assist level two. Yeah, that's quite a bit of work. Even, you know, we shift down in gears. Makes it a little bit better, but uh, it's nice to be able to crank this up to level four or five. And now all of a sudden, that steep hill is a heck of a lot easier. So that's one thing that I, I think uh, is fantastic about e-bikes is accessibility. You know, this is something for people of a broad uh, spectrum of ages. And uh, you know, if you're a little bit older, not as fit as you once were, or if you're like me who gained uh, 25, 30 pounds after running a marathon this February and your conditioning isn't exactly great, well, guess what? With an e-bike, you can go explore and do things that you may not, might not have otherwise been able to do. Uh, and so I think e-bikes uh, could also be used as a way to build up that conditioning, work your way up uh, you know, to a better level of fitness. Uh, so it's gonna be exciting to see what the future of e-bikes holds. Uh, how these things develop over time, new features, functionality uh, that comes out as they become more and more popular.
All right, this is gonna be our next lookout. We're approaching here. All right, off the beaten path. Using throttle here to come out to this wonderful lookout. All right, somebody brought a, looks like a six pack of Corona. Somebody knows how to have a good time out here. All right, and there it is. Another view of the Phoenix metro area. Now, the Phoenix area is absolutely gigantic. You know, you've got city all through here. There's downtown Phoenix. There's Tempe out there. And then if you go out east, there's a heck of a lot more uh, major cities out here. So, you know, these mountains are, are blocking some of that view, but it's huge. And out there, you've got straight ahead, you've got Camelback Mountain, which there's a city completely surrounding that mountain. So that's a beautiful hike. Uh, you've got uh, Piastewa Peak uh, to the left of Camelback, also a fantastic hike with uh, phenomenal views. And of course, you've got downtown Phoenix and uptown Phoenix out there. And one thing I want to call out is how quiet it is out here. You don't have all of that noise pollution that you have when you're down at ground level in the city. And there is the beautiful electric XP 3.0 that helped us get up here. And I'll tell you what, overall, I'm, I'm really happy with this bike. Uh, it's done a phenomenal job so far. I've got well over 100 miles on this thing now and look forward to more adventures with it. All right, well, we're going to see if we can get to those TV towers. I know there's a, an access road there. We'll see if it's open. If it is, we'll, we'll go check out the TV towers. And then uh, after that, we will head back down the hill and uh, test out these hydraulic brakes and 180 millimeter rotors on the downside of this. Let's go see if we can get to the TV towers. Uh, one thing I'll say about this bike, uh, when you turn off the screen during a trip or you pull off to the side of the road, take a break, uh, after a certain period of time, that screen will turn off. The system will turn off by itself and it will not save your trip data. So just keep that in mind because when you power it back on, uh, that trip counter is reset. Now, the nice thing is you can go into the settings and uh, I believe you can actually um, change when that screen goes to sleep, either put a longer delay or a shorter delay on that. So that's also a solve for that little problem there. All right, this is my favorite part, downhill. <laughs> oh man, look at that, there's the TV towers. We're gonna see how close we can get to those, I don't know. I see other people riding their bikes up towards that area, so we'll see if we can do the same. And there's our squeaky brakes, which I will remind you are a million times better than they were before. Okay. All right, this is actually gonna be a Looks like a steep little climb here. Uh, so you know what, I'm gonna put this to throttle only. I'm gonna stop pedaling and we'll see how well we can make it up this. So here's a little stretch here, 17 miles an hour. There's a little bit of hill, 15 miles an hour. Let's see how many amps are we pulling here 19 amps so that's putting some work in for sure 13 miles an hour okay not too shabby going back downhill here and back on the throttle and so listen if you're concerned about like the throttle only performance we're going up a super steep hill maintaining 13 miles an hour throttle only these hills uh, are not an issue. I'm gonna get back to pedaling here. Gotta look like I'm doing some work. All right, we are in pedal assist five and this is a super steep little section here. There's our radio towers in the background. Okay. 
And there's the TV towers. And uh, it's amazing how big these things are. I mean, you see them, their lights on at night uh, on the horizon. But I don't think I've ever been this close to them. You've got all kinds of people out here putting in some serious work, climbing up to the top of this mountain on their bikes. That is a lot of like continuous effort to get up this thing. And uh, hats off to them. Until I get to their level, I will be uh, cruising around on my e-bike <laughs> or electric scooter. Uh, all jokes aside though, definitely need to get uh, back into shape for another marathon. All right, let's head on back down this mountain and see how these brakes do. Hydraulic brakes with 180 millimeter rotors. Now, one thing I will say right now that I miss not having on an e-bike that I had on my uh, Segway scooter is regenerative braking and electronic braking. Uh, really nice to have to recharge your battery, especially in situations like this where there's a huge potential for energy recapture coming down a mountain like this. Could significantly uh, add uh, to your range uh, with this amount of downhill action. All right, and so for this downhill, we'll just let our friend Gravity do all the work. I just need to keep an eye out behind me because these people uh, on their road bikes come screaming down this mountain, which is a huge reward for all the work that you put in pedaling up this sucker. The nice thing is it's easy to keep an eye out what's behind me because this mirror that I got in the mail yesterday it's got a pretty large field of view and allows me to see everything behind me. <clears throat> All right, we're definitely putting some work in now. Let me switch down to five. We are not through with the hills yet. All right, look at that view, huh? Spectacular. And down the mountain we go. And this is where it's nice not having any road traffic. Because I'll tell you what, having cars lined up behind you or coming around those curbs, not super exciting. Here we can just bomb down the hill and not have to worry about anything, except some wildlife. You know, I've seen driving around in the hills in the surrounding areas of Phoenix, you get uh, like a lot of coyotes and stuff, javelina, basically wild hogs aggressive little things running around you got lizards quail the road runners of course snakes the whole nine yards you got it all out here all right and we still have <clears throat> over 50 percent battery left uh, in the tank here let's see how many uh, 47 volts near empty is somewhere around 41 to 43 so we're we're doing good we're, we're definitely above half all right we will hook a left and head back down the mountain. <clears throat> I think I've said that like five times already, but uh, mountains always got surprises with uphill, downhill. All right, here we go. 26 miles an hour. I'll slow down on these turns until I get a little more comfortable. 11, 12 amps of current. It's been 17 minutes since we uh, Left that other lookout, 132 miles on this bike and 
to this leg of the trip we're 4.2 miles in and i've got all of this tracking on my garmin watch which was uh super helpful in training for that marathon that i ran back in january you know i went into this like running mode where i ran two half marathons uh, and uh, a full marathon within the span of about 10 months after not running for like a decade and so that was a lot of work put a lot of work into that and that was one of my you know bucket list items in life is to go run a marathon and i absolutely did it all right another downhill stretch doesn't look like anybody's behind me and the braking power on this bike is really good i'm going to be 100% honest here aside from the squeakiness when you first buy it braking power is really strong All right. no pedaling here no throttling just our good old friend gravity and some brakes of course Twenty-five miles an hour down this hill once again would have been awesome to have regenerative braking here but that's okay you know you can have this bike for under you know the 3.0 the standard edition version of this bike for you know less than a thousand bucks and so for less than a thousand bucks this bike is a steal of a deal Now, if you've liked this uh, hill climb test, definitely stay tuned. I'm gonna be doing a, a distance test. I'm still trying to figure out, do I wanna do throttle only? Do I wanna do pedal assist level three the whole way? I'm not sure, but I wanna do a, a range test uh, on this bike. You know, off, out of the box, they say it'll get 60 miles and pedal assist level one. But as you all know, um, real world scenarios are a lot different. You know, they, to get that 60 miles, like I said, pedal assist level one a biker of a certain weight very specific conditions uh, very specific terrain and so you know putting this through a real world test we would of course expect uh, much less than that but uh, according to electric you can get 25 miles on the long range edition using only throttle which is more than enough for me and honestly you know i love having the throttle there and being able to use it but I also like pedaling and getting a little bit of a workout into there. So obviously today I didn't get much of a workout because I've been in pedal assist level five most of the time and gear five as well. Um, but on future rides, I hope to uh, step it up a bit, reduce that pedal assist level, maybe bring my road bike out here, I don't know. Um, but I'll tell you what, having this pedal assist makes going up these mountains really easy like i said it's been like 13 years since i've been up here and the last time i came up here i came up here in a car i've never been up here on a bike before uh, or on a hike or walk or anything like that so and back down the mountain I'm also super impressed with the quality of the roads here. Makes going down really easy because there's not a bunch of potholes everywhere that I have to watch out for because that wouldn't be a good situation. Bombing down the mountain, hit a pothole, you'll end up on your face real quick. No thank you. Super comfortable, 27, 28 miles an hour. Cruising down the mountain on the electric XP 3.0.
this really is the fun part. Twenty seven miles an hour. And uh, you know the front fork suspension as well as this uh, zoom uh, seat post suspension and the uh, updated uh, Cloud9 bike seat make this really comfortable. Twenty-eight, twenty-nine miles an hour here. To use the brakes again. Oh, look at that. We have a bike lane now. Perfect. I wish the bike lane went all the way up. Oh, speed bump. Didn't see that in time. All right, let's try class three bike here. Oh, there it is. Little extra oomph. little extra speed for our way back down. Let's see, where did I park? And we are at the bottom of the hill. All right, if you had any questions about uh, the portability of this bike, of course it folds up. This is what the bike looks like in its folded state, and it fits beautifully in my compact SUV, the Mazda CX-5. So I don't have to fold the seats down or anything, I just uh, pop the trunk, throw it in, close it up, and we're good to go. All right, so that concludes our hill climb with Electric XP 3.0 Long Range Edition up and down South Mountain here in Phoenix, Arizona. We went over 1,700 feet in elevation gain, over 16 miles uh, up and down this mountain, and we've got well over 50% battery remaining in this bike. So if you had any questions about whether or not this bike uh, is suited for hilly terrain, climbing up steep inclines, absolutely this thing did a phenomenal job today super impressed especially with the value that you get for the price that this bike costs uh, as always thank you so much for tuning into tom's gadget garage i do plan to follow this up with a range test so stay tuned for that but thank you so much for tuning in we'll see you next time